Hello everyone, this is Abdullah Said, and today we will cover Cisco Virtualized Infrastructure Manager prepare for the 5G era with Cisco 5G support. As a start, we like to start with this safe statement. Then, Cisco Ultra Cloud 5G architecture, this is our message, an evolutionary jump, delivering advanced automation, higher resiliency, greater security, and deployment simplicity into service provider infrastructure. The cloud native, the key benefits for the 5G are the lightweight footprint, increased service velocity, state separation, service mesh, increased security, improved performance and hardware efficiency, and scalability and availability. All these benefits can be translated to easier upgrade, faster time to market, faster security response, and true scalability. Cisco, Cisco Ultra Cloud contains from four pillars, microservices, containers, DevOps, and continuous delivery. Microservices, as you know, decouple software services, individual deploy and lifecycle managed. Kubernetes will be the orchestrator used for automation and scheduling and scaling. On top of that one, we need the continuous delivery, automated continuous integration, validation, and availability for containers. DevOps is the automate and manage rapid deployment, isolate production change, and deploy once validated. If we move to Cisco Cloud Native Architecture, we have the subscriber microservices infrastructure, so-called SMI. This will be over Cisco Virtualized Infrastructure Manager, CVM. It provides vertical stack design for high performance, low latency, UHA. In this vertical architecture, we can see the first stack is the infrastructure, the open stack, which will be created and deployed by CVM. Then the next layer is the cloud infrastructure itself, which is the Docker, Kubernetes, STO, Helm as a chart manager. Then on top of that, we will have the common application infrastructure, Prometheus, Grafana, Jaeger for open tracing. Then after that, we will have the layer which will contain the 5G network functions like SMF, PCF, NRF, and so on. All of that orchestrated and managed and deployed by Cisco orchestration layer, which is the NSO, Network Service Orchestrator, and ESC, the Elastic Server Controller, which will make sure all these layers and the full cycle of the hardware and software, all of them orchestrated and managed properly. Here we compare between what was before the cloud native as a monolithic software where all the state and application are in single process. However, in the microservices and container platform, we can decouple the software layers from the services from the state itself. So we can have stateless applications, then we have service application, then we have the common layer, and after that we can have the front end layers which will provide the interfaces for logging, tracing, and northbound interface. Cisco Subscriber Microservices Infrastructure, or so-called SMI, made of five pillars. The first one is the SMI Cluster Manager, who is responsible to manage pod deployments and cluster, configuration, health monitoring, resource scheduling, and lifecycle management. Then we have the Ops Center for all network functions, with they are the common API for deployment, configuration, and management to enable automation. Then the third layer is the common execution environment, which is shared by all application for non-application functions. 
it used as data storage, telemetry, and alarming. Then we have the Cisco Service Mesh, which is the intelligent service mesh to connect microservices services and containers for application and steer traffic between the containers. Then the 5G database, which is the common database layer built for high performance, low latency, especially for application like 5G and cable. And now we move to J to cover the CVM part. Thank you, Abdullah. So with that, let's take a look at uh, CVIM. So Cisco VIM is uh, Cisco's Taco Cloud platform, uh, OpenStack based, and this is the platform that we uh, hope will enable, enable you and, and Telco operators uh, to achieve what we think they are trying to achieve. So what do we think they're trying to achieve, right? So obviously, uh, as with any uh, company, it's all about trying to maximize uh, your revenue while keeping costs down and, and, and minimizing risk. So when we talk about something as complex as a, a, a Taco Cloud platform, uh, it's almost obvious these days that the only way to achieve this and do this properly is through extensive automation. And that's exactly what uh, Cisco Vim will do for you. Right? So when we take a look at what it takes to, to build and, and operate a Taco Cloud, if you go from uh, a bunch of uh, servers uh, all the way to a fully up and running cloud, there's a whole bunch of things that need to happen. Now, this slide is actually intentionally quite busy, but this is just to show all the things that Cisco Vim will do for you, right? So all of these things need to happen, but most of these can actually be automated and will be automated in the context of Cisco Vim. So with Cisco Vim, we only expose those uh, activities to the end user, to the operator, to the admins that are actually uh, meaningful, right? So that in the end, the amount of time that you as an operator and administrator need to spend dealing with Falco Cloud itself is going to be as little as possible so that you can spend your time where it matters, which is with the workloads, right? Uh, with the mobility workloads, with whatever VNFs you want to run, with whatever applications you want to run. Because in the end, that's where the money is, right? This is uh, Those applications, those VNFs are what uh, are driving your business. So as such, if we can enable, if we can enable you to maximize uh, your resources to use them where it matters, then we are setting you up for success. So as such, the way we intend to do that is by automating most of uh, all of these tasks. So if, we, if I take an example, if we want to apply uh, a patch on, on a cloud or a telco cloud, which can be tens, 20, 100 nodes, all everything will be automated. So you just say, look, this is the destination version I want to go to. And then the installer and the orchestrator engine and the lifecycle management tools will automatically download all the necessary software that is uh, comprised in this particular patch, it will push it to all the necessary nodes, it will start and stop the processes in a way which makes sense so that we don't have any downtime where it's not uh, needed, and everything will be configured, set up correctly, validated automatically and tested automatically, so at the end, when the uh, process finishes and it goes back to the administrator saying, look, patch applied successfully, you will actually have the confidence and the trust that this has actually happened uh, as, as, it, as it was supposed to happen, right? So when we take a look at uh, the different deployment models with CVIM, you actually have uh, quite a lot of flexibility to choose, look, how are we going to uh, deploy this? What is going to be the form factor and the amount of physical resources that we're going to dedicate to running our instance of this telco cloud? So if we take a look at things here, if we go from right to left, then on the right, we have the traditional full pot where you have a dedicated set of these services for controllers, uh, three or more dedicated service for storage and everything else for compute along with the management uh, server, which these days can be virtualized as well, so that doesn't have to be a physical server. This is uh, usually what we find in uh, core data centers where you have, first of all, uh, a lot of workloads to run, and at the same time, you also have the physical uh, space to run all of these servers. While if you go more toward the middle, uh, you can say, look, there are uh, use cases where it actually makes sense, where we will have, instead of uh, fewer, bigger pods, we'll have more smaller pods. And these pods are typically closer uh, towards the edge. And with the edge, as this can mean many different things, that usually means, in this case, uh, closer to the source of your user traffic. And with these micropods, we basically uh, reduce the hardware footprint so that you can have uh, more optimizations in the, sense, in, in the sense of, given a certain amount of physical servers, and how many of these servers can we actually run uh, workloads, right? So with the micropod, what we have done is we collapsed the control, the storage, and the compute plane all on the same server, but we still take three of each, 
just to make sure that we still have the HA, the redundancy and reliability that you come to expect in uh, telco uh, networks, right? In, in service provider, in communication providers, networks, where all of uh, uh, everything needs to remain up no matter what. And then when we go to a, a somewhat more optimized version, uh, probably even closer to the edge, and typically this is also where you will start to see uh, virtual radio access network uh, uh, workloads. That's what we call the edge pod. And an edge pod is basically an optimization of the micro pod in the sense that we've taken out a uh, storage component. So with an edge pod, we no longer run local storage and we depend on a centralized storage cluster for our edge compute nodes to actually gain access to their uh, image repositories. And usually this is fine, especially in the context of uh, virtualized network functions, which typically need, don't, don't need uh, persistent storage and only need uh, storage when they're actually uh, booting up the instance so that we can uh, grab the image from us. And then uh, something that uh, we are about to release is what we call the nanopod, which is um, basically uh, a telco server, a telco cloud inside a single server. So that's basically a one server form factor. Now, to deploy Cisco Beam, uh, next to these different pod types, we also have a whole uh, different ways of um, deploying the entire stack. Because just having OpenStack obviously uh, is not enough, even as awesome as OpenStack is. We need uh, a bunch of tooling in the ecosystem to make everything uh, work. Because it's not just the Telco Cloud platform that needs to be automate. automated. We need to be able to automate everything around it. So if you go from left to right, uh, model one, as we like to call it, is basically everything in Cisco. The hardware, the software, the different VNFs, the automation in the form of the VNF uh, manager in the form of ESC and the NFV orchestrator in the form of NSO. But uh, this is not the only way that you can use Cisco Vim. So with Cisco Vim, you pretty much have a uh, very close to an a la carte uh, way of deploying your, your entire stack where you can basically plug and play the different components. So with Model 2, you say, look, we still use most of uh, the, uh, the component Cisco, but we will also run third-party VNFs. And actually, if I look at uh, the Cisco Vim deployments that I'm aware of, and I'm aware of most of them, I will actually see that in many, if not all, of the Cisco Vim deployments, there are at least some VNFs which are not Cisco, and it's, uh, some of them, that's even most of them, which are not Cisco VNFs at this point in time. Now, with Model 3, we're also going to be introducing um, compute servers from uh, other vendors, so non-UCS uh, servers. And then with Model 4, we're not just going to be taking uh, third-party VNFs and, and third-party hardware, but we also introduce the capability to run uh, more cloud-native, if you want to call them that, containerized network functions, which can be both Cisco and non-Cisco um, CNFs. So with that, I hope to have given you a very short introduction and into what is CVIM. Uh, this is not the first time we have talked about uh, CVIM in, at uh, OpenStack uh, events, so I'm sure you will find other uh, recordings and videos and sessions from uh, previous events in case you have uh, more interest and more appetite to learn more about Cisco Vim. Thank you very much. Hello everyone, this is Abdullah Said, and today we will cover how to utilize Cisco Virtualized Infrastructure Manager, so called CVIM, to deploy Cisco 5G standalone packet core. In this demo, we will show how to take a full advantage of Cisco automated ecosystem to fully deploy 5G standalone packet core. On top of the OpenStack layer, which was created by CVIM, and including creation of the virtual machines, Kubernetes cluster, 5G network functions, and all day zero, day one configuration. So our demo will start from using existing infrastructure, which is the OpenStack, which was created by Cisco CVIM. Also, we will use a single dashboard. This is, will be used just to trigger the configuration, utilizing NSO, which is the network service orchestrators. It will be used to orchestrate and send all the configuration. And also we will use Cisco ESC, which is the elastic server controller. This will be utilized to use and configure all the virtual machines. So the single dashboard will send REST API to the Cisco NSO. Then the Cisco NSO will send the netconf to the Cisco ESC. Cisco ESC will send REST API to the OpenStack to start creation all the virtual machines. 
SMI Cluster Manager. Kubernetes Masters, Kubernetes Workers, and UPF as well. Then the next step it will be to create the 5G network functions. That will be done by sending the REST API to the Cisco NSO to start day one configuration. So the Cisco NSO will communicate to the SMI and to the UPF as well. That will install day one configuration to the UPF and will install all the 5G packet core network function like AMF, SMF, PCF, and NRF. And let's go to our actual demo. This is the OpenStack infrastructure, which was created by Cisco CVM. And as you can see here, we allocated one project uh, for our demo for our 5G packet core SA installation. This is our project. And as you see here from, from the hypervisor point of view, we have seven node allocated to our project. This is where we will create all our virtual network uh, or our virtual function here we just have here only two instances nso network service orchestrators and the esc which is the cisco elastic server the network already created in advance for just for allocation or for this project so this is the networking that we would, we would use to allocate for our 5g packet core If you look here, this is the topology that which we have right now. And as you can see, this is only two network elements are created, which will be used for creation of the um, VNF. So this is what we have right now, NSO AC. In the service manager, as you see, this is the deployment here. So if we go to the dashboard here, there is nothing here is configured yet. So we, we don't have any devices except the AC. If we go to the services, you can see there is zero deployment still here. Not, nothing installed here except for sure the AC, which is the, the one which will be used for the, for the installation. In AC level, in the dashboard, you see there is only one tenant is created here, but there is no still no deployment so we started deployment from the nso and as soon as the nso trigger ec to create the all the virtual machines in the cluster so we will start to see our instances start to be created in openstack let's just give it a time and just do refresh here as you can see here some deployments start to be displayed in the ac level which is the masters the masters here the open stack level as well here if we just do refresh you can see the start of here building more instances coming up in the ac portal as well you see here can start deploying more more of them coming As you can see, we will have multiple deployment creating for each VM. So let's see here how many instances we have. So we have our worker, we have our ETCDs, we have the masters, and we have the SMI deployer, which is the cluster manager. And we see all the worker again, all of them they are active, all of them are created here. If we go to the AC, you can see the AC, all of them start to be active here. So you can see all our deployment in the AC. Here you can see the, if we go to the network topology, you can see here now, all instances created attached to the network. And you can see all of them here. You 
can see the UP of created now. Should be active now. As you can see, three devices connecting the SMI cluster, which is the Kubernetes cluster, and the UPF Star OS. And initially, we already we already had the AC from from the beginning. You can see how many deployment that we have here and how many services are there. So you can also check the service manager to to see what was deployed from NSO side. First of all, you can check the SMI cluster, and you can see here we have a plan for the SMI. So this is the plan here, and you can see this is all the SMI cluster, which was orchestrated and created by NSO. As you can see, 85 components of the SMI cluster, including all the elements in the Kubernetes cluster, which will be the base to install later on all our 5G. As you can see here, this is the first component, which is the CEE, the Common Executive Environment, which is used for KPIs on the end and monitoring all the 5G NFs. Here you can see as well the NRF already created, and this is we can check what was created from NSO, and you can see. Uh, multiple components were created for NRF. As you can see here, PCF, SMF. So let's check the PCF side. Again, in PCF side, seven components was created or monitored by NSO. Same here for SMF. So now the orchestrator, which is NSO, is looking after all these components. And as one, we can see all of them, which we created them under a slice. So you can see 31 components. Now, at the final step, we can check all the network functions are created by logging to the Grafana. Grafana is our dashboard where we can see all the network functions and get the KPIs, the graphs from them. As you can see here, we can list all the pod created and all the Kubernetes uh, elements. Mainly you can see all the nodes here. This is the master here. We can go back as well to check the other network function like SMF. So here you can see some graphs and KPIs collected from the SMF itself related to the hardware resources, uh, KPIs request. Again, this is also some graphs collected from AMF. So basically you can see all the network functions, graphs, AMF, PCF, SMF, NRF. And that was all from my side. Thank you.